This is the Lincolnshire Aviation Heritage Centre. You can see the control tower behind me of the old airfield. It's quiet now, the first visitors haven't really started to arrive. But on this day, 70 years ago, hundreds of bases just like this in this part of the country would have been frenetically active because from them was being launched the biggest airborne operation the world's ever seen, Operation Market Garden. This film tells the story of the flight to Arnhem on the first day by the British component, by more than 350 RAF Stirlings, Halifaxes, Albemarles and Dakotas, with paratroops and Hamilcar, Horsa and Waco gliders, supported by 140 US Dakotas with paratroops. This weekend, thousands will be converging on Arnhem to remember and commemorate that operation. The more unusual pilgrims, I suppose, to this sort of event uh, are a group of motorcyclists who are heading there to raise money for a service charity. The organiser is Simon Dufton. Tell me how this came about. It's the third Dambusters charity motorcycle ride, Jeff, but particularly follows on from one last year where we were part of the 70th anniversary of the Dambusters, and it seemed a shame not to do the same thing again this year, given the success of last year. And we looked around for another anniversary, as you would do, and the 70th anniversary of Market Garden was uh, the obvious one to choose. The D-Day one being such a big one, this was the, 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 and we were particularly looking for something where the RAF maybe was a little bit of the undersung hero as our primary charity is the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund. So who's taking part and what brings them along? It's a mixture of riders from last year and new riders who've joined us this year. Some just going because they love motorcycling, some with service connections. We even have one rider whose uncle was a glider pilot at the Arnhem Landings and he's obviously going on a bit of a personal pilgrimage as well. And how seemly is it that a bunch of bikers should kind of turn up at what is really quite a serious and dignified event? Uh, it's how you do it. We're very careful to make sure that it's commemoration and not anything triumphal or, as you say, uh, just, just doing it in the wrong way. We try to make sure that everybody knows we're there to remember everybody who died, all of the death and destruction, uh, and look at it from that perspective and not from the wrong perspective. An aviation celebrity got the Arnhem charity bike ride off to a suitably historic start as Red Arrows pilot Stu Campbell rode a £16,000 British-built race replica into the hangar containing an even rarer icon. But after world-class aerobatics, wasn't biking barely a thrill? Certainly not. It's uh, certainly something I really enjoy to do in my spare time. Um, get a lot of thrill from, from riding a bike and having, enjoying the freedom uh, of being out in the roads and certainly something I like to uh, wind down. There's definitely some similarities. You certainly can't relax on a bike like you can't relax in the jet. Um, but I guess from an actual handling point of view, clearly very, very different. I was involved with uh, the, the Dam Busters or the um, uh, motorcycle uh, trip while I was a member of the Dam Busters uh, up on 617 Squadron at Lossiemouth. And that's where my interest in, in what was going on uh, developed. I did a fly pass for it in the tornado. And now that I've moved down to uh, the Red Arrows, I'm much closer to, to where the, the event starts from. So I thought I'd like to come along, see everybody off today, take part for the first few hours, and then hopefully when I leave the team and I have a bit more time, they'll do the whole event. 20 bikes have signed up to raise money for the RAF Benevolent Fund, a way of showing their appreciation for what had been done at Arnhem. I've got children and it's important that they understand the freedom we enjoy today comes at a cost and that we need to be, it's a precious thing we should look after. For one rider this was a personal journey to honour his late uncle who'd served as a teenage glider pilot. My dad's brother, my uncle Frank, um, was a 19 year old horse pilot at Arnhem. Um, he flew in, he had a rather challenging week uh, and he went on to have a long and happy life so uh, this ride for me has particular memories. In the actual operation, 650 aircraft like this took part. Today we've got a little over a dozen bikes. It'll also take us a lot longer. They did it in, what, a matter of two hours. It'll take us a day and a half. I'm just going to pause to put my helmet on and then on the road we go. On Friday, they'll combine with Dutch bikers in a cavalcade to the Arnhem Bridge, an international and unconventional way of paying respect. Jeff Mead, Forces News, Lincolnshire.
Led off by Red Arrow's pilot Stu Campbell in his distinctive red overall, the bikers each have their own reason for making this unusual pilgrimage. But another machine stands out. It's the distinctive trike of the oldest rider. Frank speaks an RAF veteran who remembers the airfields around his Lincolnshire home when they were alive with bomber operations. He's had his three-wheeler meticulously prepared to honour those who flew at Arnhem. I've changed the mud guards and changed the rear wheels and uh, we've painted it now to look like the Dakota at RAF Collingsby, the Quichabitchen. And uh, we have a little link with that as well because I've got a teddy bear that's helping me to raise funds for this uh, Dambusters 2014. Uh, and he's actually flying to Arnhem on the, uh, on the Dakota. He refused to ride on the trike. <laughs> But the thousand mile round trip isn't just fundraising for the RAF Benevolent Fund. After years when it was a forbidden subject, Frank hopes to find out something about the father he never knew, an Arnhem veteran who quit the family during the war without leaving so much as a photograph. From being a young child, I, I was always led to believe that my father was either dead or no longer available to, to anyone. Um, and in deference to my mum, I, I didn't actually pursue it. But uh, unfortunately now, uh, she's in advanced stages of Alzheimer's and uh, it won't affect her anymore. And, and I've got something now to leave to my own children. Frank believes his father re-enlisted after the war, but details are scarce. For him, this journey is all about finding out where he really comes from. Jeff Mead, Forces News, on the road to Arnhem. Five hundred miles on the road brought the charity bikers, like so many other British this weekend, to the Airborne Museum outside Arnhem. But their special destination was less visited, a modest granite memorial in the gardens dedicated to aircrew who lost their lives in Operation Market Garden. Thank you very much for joining us on this second Dambusters charity motorcycle ride. We're here to raise funds for the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund and for motorcycle outreach but above all to make a mark of commemoration and remembrance of the members of the Royal Air Force and the United States Army Air Force who flew with such bravery, lost their lives over Arnhem. John Hughes placed a laurel wreath in memory of his late uncle who, aged just 19, had piloted a glider into the battle. After the roar of the road, a moment of quiet reflection. Next stop on their pilgrimage with pillions was to the battle's main British cemetery at Oosterbeek to lay another wreath, this at the grave of one of the campaign's five VCs, 70 years to the day since Flight Lieutenant David Lord pressed on with a vital supply drop despite devastating enemy fire. He was hit by the flak, putting supplies down into the, the troops that were stuck in Arnhem, uh, and instead of pulling out, he went round again to get rid of the supplies and the wing folded. They did realise that communication was down, um, supplies up until that point weren't getting through, uh, they hadn't realised that there were uh, such a strong German force on the ground, um, so things weren't looking very good on, from the 17th through to the 19th anyway, so they knew that they had to, to make it all work, nobody wanted to be seen to be floundering, they wanted to make sure that they, they gave a 100%. It was the first visit brother and sister had made and they were touched by the bikers' respect for a forgotten hero. All those that gave their lives aren't forgotten in the Great War and this war, so it's a privilege to, to meet up with all the, the Dambuster bikers and um, I hope they raise a lot of money for their charities and it's just wonderful, we mustn't forget. The focus of the bikers' event has been very UK-based. After all, they set off from under the wings of a Lancaster bomber and are here to honour the memory of those who died as part of the RAF. But the next stage, it becomes more international. As troops did 70 years ago, they link up with our allies, riding in a noisy convoy with Dutch bikers into the heart of Arnhem itself. 
Theirs was among the more unusual of the weekend's tributes, nevertheless warmly welcomed by Arnhem, who more than anywhere appreciate the debt and respect that's brought the bikers and thousands more here this weekend. Jeff Mead, Forces News, the Netherlands.